Hey learners, do you know the 51 Pegasus B is the first exoplanet found by the humankind? It is 50 light years away from our Earth and it was discovered in the constellation of Pegasus on 6 October 1995 by these three people. Michel Mayer, who is a Swiss astrophysicist, Jeffrey Mercy, who is an American astronomer, and Didler Quillos, who is a Swiss astronomer. And do you know there is a planet named as K218b? also known as Epic 201912552b, which is 8 times the mass of our Earth and it is also known as Super Earth, which is 124 light years away from us. And, do you know there is a volcano on Mars named as Olympus Mons, which is 3 times higher than our Earth's Mount Everest. The height of our Mount Everest is 8.848 km and the height of Olympus Mons is 25 km. Wow! But, how we are able to know this? How we are able to see the facts that I have told you? Telescope. The telescope is the thing by which we see the facts that I have told you. But, have you ever tried to know the story of telescope? Oops, that's why you're here. In this video, you will get every single information of telescope. From invention to revolution to modern telescope to how it works. I will tell you about telescope by asking questions to myself. Okay, let's get started. Question number one. What is a telescope? A telescope is an optical instrument which is used to see the far things in the space like the sun, moon, stars, asteroids, planets, etc. Question number two. Who was the inventor of telescope and how does it use now and then? The inventor of telescope was not an astronomer. He was just a spectacle maker. His name was Hans Lipperhe and he invented it on October 2, 1608. In the olden times, telescopes were used for making Earth's bound observations such as surveying and military tactics. And now, telescopes are the most important navigate tool in astronomy. It provides means of collecting and analyzing radiation from celestial objects, even those in the far reaches of the universe. Question number 3. How does this telescope work? There are three types of telescopes, refractor, reflector, and catadioptric. Now, we will understand one by one the concept of how these three types of telescope works. Refractor telescope. In refractor telescope, there are two types. One is Galilean refractor telescope, and second one is Keplerian refractor telescope, which mainly use the lenses to magnify the image. Galilean refractor telescope. In the image, as you can see, the light first goes into the convex lens which is called an objective, placed first here, and then it goes into the concave lens, also called as an eyepiece, placed after the convex lens or objective to magnify the image. Keplerian Refractor Telescope The Keplerian Refractor Telescope is pretty much the same as the Galilean Refractor Telescope, but it has a longer pipe. The concave lens or an eyepiece is placed a little far from the objective, which in the image as you can see creates a focal point, and the light goes into an eyepiece which creates a better image than the Galilean refractor telescope. But the image of Keplerian refractor telescope seems inverted both vertically and horizontally, but still Keplerian refractor telescope are used more than the Galilean refractor telescope because of its large field of view and it is most used by the astronomers because no matter the image of space objects looks inverted both vertically and horizontally. Reflector Telescope In Reflector Telescope, there are also two types Newtonian Reflector Telescope and Cassegrain Reflector Telescope which mainly use the mirrors to magnify the image. Newtonian Reflector Telescope In the image, as you can see, the objective of the telescope is a concave parabolic mirror with a long focal length and the eyepiece at 45 degree with a short focal length. The rays coming from the outside reflected at the primary mirror or objective and then it directed sideways at the small plane mirror to the eyepiece lens. Cassegrain Reflector Telescope The Cassegrain Reflector Telescope uses the pretty much same concept of the Newtonian Reflector Telescope. but this telescope has an aperture in the primary mirror or objective. In the image, as you can see, 
The rays from the outside reflected the objective or primary mirror, and then the rays are directed towards the small mirror, which again reflect the rays towards the aperture. The rays passes in the aperture creates a focal point and then reaches the eyepiece lens. Cathedral of Brick Telescope You might have observed that refracted telescope use lenses and reflected telescope use mirrors to magnify image. But Cathedral of Brick Telescope use the combination, means it uses both lenses and mirrors to magnify the image. Here are how it works. In the image, as you can see, the rays from the outside first passes to the corrector plate and then the primary mirror or the objective reflects or directs the rays towards the secondary mirror held at the center of the corrector plate. Then the secondary mirror again reflects or directs the rays towards the aperture from which it reaches the eyepiece. So now we know how the telescope works, let's move to the next question, which is Question number 4 how does the telescope invented? The story of telescope till now. Now I am going to tell you a story of remarkable journey to 400 years of an extraordinary device that is changing everything we thought we knew. The telescope. The man who invented and patented the world's first telescope was not an astronomer. He was just a spectacle maker, and his name was. On slipper head. He invented it on 2nd October 1608. The story goes like this. Once Hans Slipperhe was sitting calm in his shop and two children were playing in his shop. Accidentally, the children kept one lens after another. Hans Slipperhe observed that the lenses made the distance where the vein appeared close. After the incident, Hans Slipperhe worked on lenses and invented the world's first telescope which the government had awarded to Lipperhe with a contract for copies of its design. The telescope made by Lipperhe was called as spyglass at the starting, which had three times magnification image that our eyes can see. And the spyglass was used to spy and spot enemies. That is why it is called as spyglass. After one year in 1609, one of the greatest astronomer Galileo Galilei was in Venice and there he heard about Lipperhe and his invention a military spyglass. The first night after Galileo returned to Padua from Venice, he made his own version of telescope the next day, by fitting a convex lens in one extremity of a leaden tube and a concave lens in the other one. A few days after, having succeeded in making a better version of telescope than the first one, without even looking the design of Lipper Hayes telescope, he took it to Venice, where he communicated the details of his invention to the public and presented the instrument itself to the Doge Leonardo Donato, who was sitting in full council. The Senate in return settled him for life his lecture at Padua and doubled his salary. After that, Galileo spent his most of the time improving the telescope, and soon after, he made another version of it, which can magnify up to 8 times, and finally, one nearly a meter long with a 37mm objective and 23 times magnification. With the large telescope, he was able to observe our natural satellite, the moon. And when Galileo observed the moon with his telescope, he saw craters and valleys. And that was an extraordinary moment for Galileo. Now, you will say, what is extraordinary in this fact? Everyone knows that moon has craters and valleys like our Earth. But friends, at the time of Galileo, the belief was that Moon is a smooth surface sphere, and when Galileo observed at the moon, he had an extraordinary scene. After that, he observed the Jupiter by his telescope, one of the wandering stars of his time, and he watched it like no one had ever seen it before. This is an exact reconstruction of Jupiter planet as Galileo had seen through his telescope. He was surprised to see the Jupiter because it was sphere, it was another world like us. Day after day, he observed that some round things are orbiting around it. He was surprised and started to think, why stars are orbiting the Jupiter? After two or three weeks, he learned that those stars were moons of the Jupiter. He knew he had discovered something spectacular. He publishes all his findings in a book called Starry Messenger. After he publishes the book, he became famous overnight and then he started to observe the Venus. He observed that the Venus was changing shape and size over a period of month. It was transforming 
week after week from a large crescent to a small round disk. Then again shadows creep across the Venus and return a large crescent. For Galileo, the pattern of shadows he observed on Venus can only mean one thing. Venus is going around the Sun. And this leads to only one thing. Sun is the center of the universe, not the Earth, as the believers were at the time of Galileo. And this discovery brought Galileo to direct conflict to the Roman Catholic Church because the Church thought that the God placed the mankind on the Earth, at the very center of the universe. But what Galileo had seen was the solar system we know today. The Galileo had changed the world of science and universe forever. After that, he observed the Saturn and ring of it. Wait a second, I'm getting off topic. But if you want one video on discoveries made by telescope, comment below. Let's come back to topic. So, the problem with early telescopes were fuzzy images and the reason was the shape of lenses. As NASA's astrophysicist Kim Weaver demonstrates, when a strong curved lens bends or reflects the beams of the light, the light prism comes to a single point. And this was the reason the image of early telescopes were fuzzy and also some of the light has split out its color and that distorted the image. To fix this, the only way was to use the thinner lenses with a shallower curve. Refracting telescopes started to become long and get greater magnification. 17th century astronomers made ever thinner lenses and spaced them further apart. From 1660, telescopes are magnified up to 50 or 100 times. This was the first space race on the quest to see ever further. Telescope reach absorbed proportions up to 150 feet in length, half the length of a football field. These telescopes were better, but astronomers wanted to see even more detail, and these telescopes don't eliminate the rainbow colors altogether. Then, science's greatest mind set out to solve the problem, the Isaac Newton. Sir Isaac Newton takes a look at the light itself. Sir Isaac Newton found that the white light is composed of all the rainbow colors. As the light passes through the glass prism, it bends or reflects breaking up the colors of rainbow. And this experiment was the root of the solution of astronomers' problem. Sir Isaac Newton started to make his own telescope, in which he used mirrors instead of lenses, because mirrors also bring light to focus, as lenses do. But there is one critical difference between lenses and mirrors. In lens, the light passes through it, but in mirror, the light bounces back, so there are no rainbow colors to distort the image. Newton creates a tiny 6 inches long telescope. He makes a curved mirror only 1.5 inches across and inserts it into the base of the tube. Light from the outside passes down the tube and reflects back to the curved mirror, and then again reflects back to a small mirror and again reflects to a flat mirror and focused by an eyepiece. This small reflector telescope works well as 4 foot long telescope that use lenses. By this, Sir Isaac Newton creates world's first reflector telescope which eradicates the rainbow color, a problem that plagued the telescopes since the time of Galileo. After a century, a musician and composer named William Herschel wanted to use the bigger version of Newton's reflector telescope and wants to see even more further than anyone before. Now, you will ask how a musician will have interest in astronomy. Actually, the real passion of Herschel was not music, it was astronomy. So, he wanted to create the bigger version of Newton's telescope to see more than just planets. He wants to see the fate and stars. Herschel knew that if he built bigger mirror, he will be able to collect more light because more wider his aperture, more light he can collect and see further into the space. But one problem. At the time of Herschel, the mirrors were still made up of metals. Glass mirrors were not being invented and making a large curved mirror with metal was not so easy. So working in his basement, Herschel caused discs of metal called speculum, a special mixture of molten tin and copper. Casting metal discs was just the first step because cooled flat discs need a shiny curved surface to become his mirrors. So, to get them shiny curved surface, Herschel painstakingly grinds and polishes the metal disc by hand to the precise shape needed to form an image. And in 1781, Herschel peers night after night into the sky 
and at the side, his sister Carmen was recording his all observations and became a prominent astronomer herself. Then, on March 13th, they record something that they had never recorded, a very faint star that seems to move backdrop of the other stars. This star was a new planet they discovered, the Uranus. After, in 1781, Herschel Bell's 20 feet long telescope and started to observe this strip of stars, what we call Milky Way. At the time of Herschel, no one knows that the Milky Way is a galaxy and no one knows what its shape is. And finding the shape of Milky Way was his obsession. Herschel was tirelessly observing the sky and was mapping the distribution of all stars he can see in the great circle that cuts to the Milky Way. The survey took one year of precise recording and Herschel made a map called the Grindstone. But one great mystery remains to the Herschel. The large strange objects that astronomers can explain. They call them nebulae. Herschel made a catalogue of these mysterious objects, counting and classifying over 2300 nebulae. But even with this giant telescope, Herschel can't explain what they were or where they were. Sixty years later, at Burr Castle, Ireland, the eccentric Lord Ross builds the largest telescope in the world. He builds it because he wanted to crack the enigma of the nebulae. Six-story walls supported cubes, 60 feet long telescope, and the mirror was the height of a man. Lord Ross points his telescope at the nebulae and sketches what he observed. And for the first time, the fuzzy images of the nebulae came into the focus. Inside of them, Ross can see stars and spiraling structures. But there is a problem with his telescope. His telescope can only move up and down and the mirror tarnishes easily. The giant telescope falls into disrepair. After 8 years, a telescope bigger than Galileo ever imagined, high on a mountain peak. This telescope on Mount Wilson, California, revealed that the spiral nebulae first sketched by the Ross are separate galaxies beyond our own. And this revolutionized the idea of scientists of the scale of our universe. Now, our Milky Way was not only the galaxy in the universe. Now, it is one of the hundreds or billions of the galaxies. After that, in 1995, humanity discovers the first exoplanet named 51 Pixar B, as I have told you in the starting of this video. After 51 Pixar B, NASA on March 6, 2009, launches the brand new telescope named Kepler to find rocky planets like our Earth which are orbiting other stars. The mission of Kepler is to collect light from the field of 100,000 stars inside our Milky Way looking for clues for other worlds. Kepler had already discovered several exoplanets, but not like our Earth. But scientists say it's just a matter of time to discover planets like our Earth. After this long journey comes the most modern telescope, the Hubble Telescope. The Hubble Space Telescope was launched into the low Earth orbit in 1990 and remains in the operation. It was not the first space telescope, but it is one of the largest and most versatile, well-known both as vital research tool and as public relation boon for astronomy. And it was named after the astronomer Edwin Hubble. The Hubble telescope was built by the United States Space Agency NASA with contribution from the European Space Agency. The Space Telescope Institute selects Hubble targets and processes the resulting data, while the Goddard Space Flight Center controls the spacecraft. Space telescopes were proposed as earlier in 1923. Hubble was funded in 1970s with a proposed launch in 1983. But the project was beset by technical delays, budget problems and 1986 challenge disaster. It was finally launched by Space Shuttle Discovery in 1990. But its main mirror had been ground incorrectly resulting in spherical aberration that compromised the telescope's capabilities. The optics were corrected to their intended quality by a servicing mission in 1993. Hubble is the only telescope designed to be maintained in the space by astronauts. Five space shuttle missions have repaired, upgraded and replaced system on the telescope, including all five main instruments. The fifth mission was initially cancelled on safety grounds following the Columbia disaster in 2003. But NASA Administrator Michael D. Griffin approved the fifth servicing mission which was completed in 2009. The telescope was still operating as of 
April 24, 2020, its 30th anniversary, and could last until 2030 to 2040. One successor to Hubble Space Telescope is the James Webb Space Telescope, which is scheduled to be launched in the late 2021. And this brings us to the next question, which is... Question number 5. Are scientists building any upgrade version of Hubble Space Telescope? The answer is yes. As I have told you at the end of the telescope story, the James Webb Space Telescope is going to replace the Hubble Space Telescope. It is going to launch on 31st October 2021. The James Webb Space Telescope is named after James E. Webb, who was an administrator of NASA from 1961 to 1968, who played an integral role in the Apollo program. Hope you enjoyed and learned a lot from this video. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, share it and subscribe my channel Do You Know Facts and thanks for watching.